my first question um, is what inspired the name Dams of the West? Um, well, I, I think the baseline of that is that in terms of like a band name, a project name, I sort of knew very early on that my, my legal Christian name, Chris Thompson, <laughs> yeah. is not the most exciting of names. Mm-hmm. It's, it's perfectly fine. It's fine. It's cool. It's yeah. spelled... C- last name's like spelled a little bit weird. Yeah. Uh, CT just seemed also a little like boring. Like, yeah. There's, I'm sure there's potentially like millions of CTs in this country right now. Connecticut. Connecticut. Yeah. <laughs> that's one of the bigger ones certainly um, I was thinking of people but states also yeah. um, and I don't know yeah so I was sort of I went through a lot of trial and error and came up with a lot of bad ideas uh, the occasional good idea and then this one came up where I had read an article about literal dams in the western United States huh. and the debate over yeah whether they're still useful or not and I, mm-hmm. I sort of thought that there was a parallel there of uh, being you know like being a dude writing essentially rock songs in 2017 of, yeah. of uh, you know, playing or existing on infrastructure built in the middle of last century and, mm-hmm. you know, sort of figuring out if, if it's still, you know, how it still works. Huh, interesting. I, I didn't think And that. also, as you know, I think dams are kind of like cool monoliths, yeah. like huge things of concrete. I think they're visually interesting. So there's a visual mm-hmm. element to it. There's a, a conceptual underpinning, mm-hmm. and also it was um, the Twitter app was available. So <laughs> that's a big. Well, yeah, that's, that's a big that part. could be a deal breaker. Um, so, what was the timeline like for like your songwriting experience for the album? Um, did you like write it all at once, or was it spread over like a, kind of like a large amount of time? Um, well, I think probably the, all the writing probably ended up taking place between like March and. August of 2015. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, so there's like a, a pretty kind of a big burst once I, I sort of like felt like I got a foothold in, in, a, yeah. in a way of songwriting that that felt maybe not wholly unique, but it felt like interesting. It felt like I, I wasn't hearing lyrics necessarily the way that I, you know, that they were coming out that this felt interesting to me. Yeah. Like potentially new ground, mm-hmm. newish ground. Uh, that once sort of that came to be, that, that, a bunch of stuff ended up did come quite quickly, but some like the song, the last song, Youngish Americans, mm-hmm. there was like a sort of the chorus and the second verse were just sort of standalone that I had written mm-hmm. early on in the process, but then like nothing was really working in a larger song context. And then just sort of right at the end, the other two verses came and it sort of filled out and became a full song. So, okay. uh, so you know, sorry. I think like a, a fairly long stretch, but but also a, also a somewhat specific window, yeah. if you want. So like right after Modern Vampires and the tour finished, yeah. Yes. Not, uh, the album came out a few years before oh, this, yeah, but that's uh, right. but when the tour finished, yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, so you seem to be the most low key member of Vampire Weekend. <laughs> um, my friends and I actually joke about how you're kind of the enigma of the group. Oh really? Yeah. Um, nice. And I think <laughs> I wouldn't <laughs> think of I don't think of that way, but well, that's nice. I think it's partly. Why I was so surprised to hear how personal your album um, and your songs are. Um, so, have you always like strived to maintain like a low profile on social media and just your appearances? And- um, I guess. I mean, <laughs> although I would say as a sort of a fairly large counterpoint is I'm putting an album out with my stupid face on the cover. That's, that's true. <laughs> so that's, that's yeah. like a pretty big uh, <laughs> vote on the non low key side. <laughs> But uh, I, I guess, I don't, I don't know. I mean, you know, like being in a band that does well is like a very weird experience. Yeah. Um, a super blessed one, a very awesome one, you know, crazy. But it, it is like, you know, it it's, can be confusing. And the, the person that, you know, you are when you play those first shows, you either feel like you're the same person when you're playing for a, a ton of people or you mm-hmm. feel like you're a different person or, or whatever. I, I think I had, a, a, not a hard time, but... It was definitely I was I'm the least adaptable of the band I would say I'm the most not conservative but like I I don't pivot very well uh-huh. like it takes me a minute to like change and sort of Vampire Weekend you know changed very quickly in a lot yeah. of times and, um, so I don't know I, I guess that uh, the low key stuff I guess it's probably also just like a little bit of a deflectionary mechanism of like self defense of like you know if you don't put yourself out there then no one can like you know talk shit but. Uh, yeah, I don't know, so the, the, the song angle, um, that, that definitely was not a conscious choice of like, man, I need to write like super personal stuff, but 
I think, again, sort of similar along the lines of finding the voice of like writing interesting songs that that was inevitably what I thought I had to say and what I thought would people would respond to I I didn't I feel like my experience in life has been very singular Mm -hmm. not like you not unique but has just it just feels like I if I was able to say anything that would mean something to people it would be sort of like from my experience so that even like my parents were very surprised when they heard the songs they're like I don't think like I told them half the stuff that I wrote about in the songs but like <laughs> they, they were sort of you know then my wife was also like Are you sure you want to do this it's like yeah, yeah might as well <laughs> um, so I've always associated with drums so it's a bit surreal for me to sing like you singing and playing guitar mm-hmm. um, so how many instruments do you play um 21 Oh wow! On the dot. No, uh, I, oh, I, I, I don't. I don't know if there's a specific number. Uh, okay. But the for the first two practices of Vampire Weekend, I was actually supposed to be the guitarist. Oh okay. Uh, yeah. I was. I was a bit of a. I feel like people your age don't know who this is, but I was a bit of a Trey Anastasio acolyte. Do you guys know who that is? Nope. Just like nope. that. <laughs> uh, well, ask your older brother or Google it. Okay. Um, <laughs> But anyways, I was, I was thought of as like, oh, I would be the guitarist, but then Mm -hmm. we we had trouble finding a drummer and I'd always like enjoyed playing drums and like fooled around, but Mm -hmm. never didn't know anything. Yeah. Uh, So I said, well, I can give it a shot and sort of, you know, here we are. Yeah. Uh, So this to me feels like I'm definitely less good than I was in college at guitar, but this feels like more of a return than like a, a new thing, I guess to me. I mean, obviously the doing it for actual people is new but yeah. the playing of the guitars is, is sort of old uh, and yeah the, the 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 act of playing most of the instruments on the record was Pat Carney's idea who produced the album and mm-hmm. just kind of said like can you do it and I was like yeah you know yeah. And he's like well it's just easier that way why don't you just go ahead and do it that's awesome um, so it's really interesting for me that you study music in college but did you, I, I've always wondered, did you study, like, what What was your instrument in college that you... Well, the, so the program at Columbia, which is definitely not, I think there, you can take a track that's, like, somewhat conserv- more conservatory style, mm-hmm. but the at least my experience, and Rostam and I took a lot of the same classes. I actually met him the first day of classes, the first class. Wow. We were, we ended up, like, sitting next to each other at the back of this theory class. That's and awesome. then we were, like... We live close to each other, so it became friends. Oh, uh, but it was mainly like you know, like learning the some specific Western classical canon tenets of of, of the theory, mm-hmm. and then you could choose to be more performance, you could choose to be more composition, you could choose to be more like music history, like ethnomusicology. Okay. I ended up doing more of the history ethnomusicology. Rossum did more of the composing. Okay, that makes sense because I was wondering like if that really affected how um, like you make songs now like with a music background I mean you know I think anytime anyone makes a song everything they've learned is like in play yeah whether they're either ignoring something they've learned or like purposely ignoring something they learned or utilizing it yeah you know it's it's there mm-hmm. so definitely there are some there are some parts you know there's a couple string stuff that I wrote for, for the album that like I still remember the rules that Professor Kramer like I learned from him freshman year wow um and yeah, so you know, like specific small things, like not important to talk about. But uh, I, yeah, I mean, definitely, maybe not like the the meat of the songs, like lyrics, melody stuff, yeah. or m- lyrics, but some of the more arrangement stuff that's certainly still there. Awesome. Um, do you have any advice for current music majors, <laughs> especially with how grim like job opportunities are? Oh man, <laughs> I don't know. I don't feel competent to give advice to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> But, I mean, you know, again, like, my experience was very weird. Yeah. And, like, not necessarily, uh, <laughs> like, I, I, I didn't, after the first rehearsal, first rehearsal of Vampire Weekend and, like, the, the songs that Ezra and, and Ross were bringing to the table, I was, I was, I remember thinking and, like, saying to my roommate or something, I was like, this is actually pretty good. <laughs> uh, you know, I'd been in bands and stuff and, like, they were fun, but I yeah. never really, like, thought I would be playing the Newport Music Hall in 2017. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I, I, there was something... I, 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 so, I, I don't know, maybe, like, trust your gut. Okay. I feel like, you know, if if you really think about it and think if 
like does this feel like worth the time effort money sacrifice that i'm going to put into it mm, yeah then you know go for it see what happens yeah if, and I if think, you i think you know if you really ask yourself and you're like unsure at any of those levels then yeah you know maybe you don't and that's <laughs> I, I don't know I don't yeah know. that that's that's the only vague advice i can give but even that would that's like a 60 percent advice <laughs> no but that totally makes but sense cause... think of it for, think about it for yourself yeah <laughs> I mean, I wasn't totally feeling it when I, I mean, I love music and I love performing, but I just like, I think that that makes so much sense because it wasn't just clicking for me. Right. Um, but anyway, I, what I really like about your album is how you've established your own unique sound, even though, um, some of the elements remind me a bit of Vampire Weekend, like the bass in, in Aaron C. Okay. Reminds me kind of of Everlasting Arms. Okay. Um, so, like, what was the biggest difference in the dynamic of making a solo album versus with, like, a full band, like, writing with that many people? Right. Well, I mean, you know, I think Vampire Weekend songs come together in any number of ways. Yeah. You know, sometimes, but very rarely, it's, like, the four of us at instruments. Mm -hmm. Often it's, like, as we start something and, like, Rostam, it goes through Rostam and they sort of work on it and either Ben and I come in or we don't and... You know, so there's any number of ways that it can come up. I do think the, um, the, I mean, the difference is, yeah, like, you don't have anyone, I mean, you could, and I might in the future, but for this one in particular, I didn't really have anyone that I could, like, ask, or, like, yeah. do you have any ideas? <laughs> like, actually, the first, the first, like, real, the first real, you know, when in the studio with Pat and the engineers, like there was a lot of stuff going on, but I, but I feel like the first time someone was like an idea that was like totally not mine, but then I thought about it, I was like, you know what, that's way better than my idea, was the cover. <laughs> oh, yeah? Where my idea was to have like 30 CTs like strewn about the landscape, <laughs> like doing calisthenics or like various things. Yeah. And then <laughs> Jake Longstreth, uh, the artist who, who was like working on it with me, just sent me this thing. He's like, what about this one big one? Like, I think this, this like is, it still sort of gets the messages that you're trying to play with, but it's like, I think it's like a better image. Yeah. And like when I first was like, oh no, man, he's, he's wrong. And then I like, uh, I thought about it. I was like, yeah, you know, he's right. Um, so, you know, so like, that's obviously not a musical answer, but, yeah, no, uh, no. but yeah, I, th I think that that was the biggest difference of so there's no like sounding boards, yeah, like in real time sort of thing. And mm -hmm. you, again, you sort of like trusting your own gut and instincts and, yeah, yeah, hopefully it <laughs> hopefully it worked. I don't know. No, I think it did. Um, <laughs> um, so in Pretty Good Wi-Fi, you mentioned visiting Daytona and getting a spray tan. Yeah. When, and I always smile at that part because not only because it's funny, but I actually live in Daytona now. Oh, nice. So. <laughs> Do you get spray tans when you're down there? No. I, no. <laughs> I mean, I can't even get an actual tan because I'm too pale, <laughs> so. <laughs> Well, then spray tans would be good then. Yeah. If you wanted to have a tan, you could. I guess. I'm, I'm just scared that I would get too orange or something. So. Which is, especially right now, is a political statement. <laughs> <laughs> good point. Um, so I was wondering, did you actually get a spray tan, tan down there? Or was it just like a symbolic type thing? Um, I think I think the best answer I can give is like <laughs> like a lot of stuff on this record, it's, it's not... It's like based in truth, okay. but it's not necessarily ripped from the headlines. Okay, yeah. Um, I, I don't think I've ever I've driven past I don't think I've ever been to Daytona oh interesting but Daytona is, is you know it's, it's a, I think that name is a very evocative place of like yeah spring breaks yep NASCAR NASCAR <laughs> sun fun in the sun yeah you know, I, I mean I'd love to go to Daytona the Daytona travel board is watching us yeah <laughs> come you know, <laughs> hook me up but yeah that's all I have so cool I hope you're enjoying the album. I know I enjoyed making it, and I hope you come to see the show. Woo! And shout out to Miami Ohio. Yeah! <laughs> shout out to Miami Florida also. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. This was my youth.